This is the way they do it in the Philippines. Don't die in the heat. Don't be found like this dead fish that we found and decided to have a photo shoot with. Even though that fish looks pretty good for a dead dried out fish. Maybe it was Egyptian because it looks better than a mummy. All right, beat the heat in the Philippines. Um, stick around, this is a good one, and we're gonna talk about some great mountain cities at the end. If you don't wanna deal with the heat, period, it, this, this will be some good information for you. I have been to most of Luzon, and I will be headed to islands south, at least one island south, in the near future, but I've got Luzon pretty much covered. So the five ways that we beat heat in the Philippines, I've got a list here I've made, so I'm not just winging it. Use their right accessories. I've got no hair on my head, and I have a friend who told me, Joe, use sunscreen or buy a hat. You don't have any melatonin. You're a white guy. I said, yeah, I am a white guy. So I have a straw hat. Now, I finally found one because I've got a big head. Trying to find a, a hat size seven and a half in the Philippines is not easy because as a Westerner, we are typically larger physically. So if you, if you, even if you've not worn a hat before, I'm not a hat guy, you know, wore one in the military, but buy a good straw hat and it lets the air blow through. And actually mine's not even a good straw hat. Mine is made of paper. If it gets wet, it's gonna disintegrate. The next thing to consider when we talk about appropriate accessories, we wanna talk about umbrellas. Umbrellas are used everywhere. Now here's some shots of people walking around with umbrellas, and this is lunchtime, so that there are not as many people walking as far. They come out of the office for a little bit, or they go from you know one side of High Street to the other. They just go across to get something to eat at a restaurant, Jollibee, or whatever. But you'll see all these people using umbrellas, and I use an umbrella a lot in, in the summer heat. April, May, it's super hot here. Umbrella is a lifesaver. Now there is some controversy. I googled online, maybe somebody can tell me what's, what the right answer is. But black absorbs the heat. When we, we make water bladders out of, of black rubber so that you, know, so that you can hang it and take a solar shower, right? They don't make those things to reflect the sunlight. They make them black to absorb the heat. Well. Apparently, the darker colors absorb the UV light better, but I can feel the heat radiating off of a black umbrella or a dark colored umbrella, so I opt for the lightest color I got, which is like a baby blue, almost silver. That with a hat keeps me plenty cool. Clothing, this, was a, this is another one. This was really, this one took me by surprise. The clothing uh, that, that you see most people wearing, long sleeves. They wear jackets. They wear um, uh, loose-fitting clothing. You don't see a lot of this high-tech, tight-fitting stuff, which, you know, what I thought was, was I'm going to get some of this high-tech, uh, super-duper, whatever, Gore-Tex, and it'll wick the sweat off of me. Give me it doesn't. Not here. You, there's just not. There's just too much humidity, and things don't evaporate. What you see people wearing here that's effective, and what I've transitioned to, is cotton. Very thin cotton shirts. Uh, this shirt I'm wearing wearing is cotton, but you know, it's a little heavy, but the wind blows through it and it keeps me cool. With a tight fitting um, uh, synthetic clothing, it doesn't work. And besides that, it starts to smell. Even after you wash it, I was really shocked because luckily I don't really stink. Uh, but you know, I could smell after being here for six or seven weeks. My, even after I wash my clothes, I'm like, why do these stink? Well, it's because of that high tech fabric holds the stink. They don't advertise that, but Google it. You'll find out that uh, it's true. So accessories are important. Uh, Umbrellas, hats, loose clothing, long sleeves, and one of the other things that they wear, you see there's a guy with a rag over his head. It's very common to see um, workers, and when they're crossing the street or when they step out of the shade, they pop that rag on their head and then they get past the heat, and they, or they take their jackets and they pull their jackets up over their head while they make it through the sunlight till they get to the next spot of shade, and then they pull the jacket back down on them. So it's, it's not intuitive, it, well, at least it wasn't intuitive to me. Buy some cheap uh, clothes when you get here, unless you are a very large human being. And the reason I'm saying buy clothes when you get here is because a lot of the uh, a lot of the clothes that you bring 
will become too big. Stick around, we'll talk about clothes getting loose and exercise uh, shortly. All right, use, utilize the cover of shade, number two. This is super important in the city, it's easy because you've got awnings, you've got buildings. As long as you're not outside at, at high noon, you can usually find one side of the street to walk on and you can find awnings and shade. If not, again, we've got umbrellas and hats, uh, but shade is, is, is super important. You'll see even people lining up. It's, it's really um, obvious. You'll see people in queues at traffic uh, lights, at intersections, right across the street, and there'll be a traffic, a traffic pole, and they'll be lined up in, in line, straight with it. So it's very, very common to see people avoiding the shade, They'll or avoiding the sun. They, um, they got the umbrella, they walk under the shade, click, umbrella closes, they pop out of the shade, umbrella goes back up, standing uh, in line with the light poles, etc. So shade, super important. And dehydration, I mean, this is real stuff. I had a hard time drinking enough water when I first got here because I wasn't a big water drinker. But you've got to drink water here. You'll, you'll discover it pretty soon. You'll, you'll find yourself dehydrated. The first two months I fought being dehydrated and, and now I'm, I'm pretty much acclimated. All right, outdoor activities, schedule your outdoor activities to preclude or avoid direct sunlight exposure. And I loved Santo Tomas Lubao in San Fernando. I loved Vigan and Iloca Sur. Those places are super hot during the day. Not many people out. Even, even people have told me, don't go out. And, and so in the morning hours, it's good if you want to go for your walk, you want to run or do whatever. And in the afternoon, you start seeing people coming out shopping and socializing and doing all this stuff. So it's kind of a natural thing here. Uh, unless you're in the mountains and then, then it's another story. But for the most part, if you can limit your outdoor activities, and this is no different than living in Florida or in, in Louisiana or whatever, people cutting their grass at night, people cutting their grass at 5 a.m., uh, they do it for a reason and it holds true here. It's pretty, this is pretty much a hot Florida or Louisiana equivalent. Number four, improve your fitness. This is this one is really important and it's it's absolutely amazing to me because I watched somewhat what I ate in the United States, but I exercised. I rode my bike um, the last several months before I left. I rode less, um, but you know, 75 to 100 miles a week was my normal ride on my bicycle, and then a lot of time on a range running carrying equipment back and forth, back and forth, in the sun all day. And I was pretty well acclimated to the heat and to physical exertion. What surprised me is that when I got here, there's just, you don't have all the temptations. Even though I thought I was good, you don't have the temptations. And I walk a ton. I walk on average four to five miles per day. And, and I don't wear my smartwatch. I don't like wearing a computer on my wrist. But I do wear my Garmin every now and again all day, just kind of keep track of how far I actually walk. And I know that when I do my daily routine, I'll walk out and I'll go get coffee and I'll work at a coffee shop for a while. I'll come back to the condo and then I'll grab my camera and then I'll start walking the city. And on those days, four to five miles real easy and that's most days probably average four miles a day is a real easy easy conservative estimate and so what's happened is slowly I've lost weight I've become more fit my resting heart rate is 61 um, down to 59 so between 59 and 61 uh, and that's that's pretty darn good that's that's between excellent and athlete according to the charts and I'm I'm not an athlete believe me I have lost a lot of weight just by walking and not having as much available food. So my size 36 pants, I brought a bunch of chinos and khakis, you know, lightweight cotton clothes, and uh, I got rid of them because they don't fit. So now I am wearing a size 34, and the 34s fit comfortably loose. I may go down a little bit more, but I went from 205 to 170 without even thinking about it. As far as being fit, also most condominiums, if you're going to come here and transition, it's just easy to rent a condo and get everything done, figure out immigration, figure out health insurance. All these things are so easy and there are other videos talking about it, but they, most condominiums have fitness centers. Here are pictures from my fitness center in my building. I've got a great pool. I swim three to four times a week and it's, and it's easy and there's usually nobody in them. It's, uh, you know, people uh, come here in the Airbnb 
Airbnb or they, they work here, but you know, a lot of these places are owned by foreigners and there's nobody in them. So the pools are never crowded. You know, on the weekends there's some kids, but you know, come, come take advantage of the amenities that you're paying for. Outdoor activities are abundant. You, um, you're going to be festivals, uh, people outside at the markets. You're going to see, you're just going to see so many things going on in the evening that again, it's easy. Just get out there, walk, and enjoy yourself. You'll find out that all your, your measurables, all the things that, that they look at to determine our, our health, they, all the markers improve when you come here. It's just simple as that. Very little effort or no effort, actually, you just live a better lifestyle. Number five, choose a place at a higher elevation. There are a ton of mountains in the Philippines. On the uh, northeast side of Luzon, you've got the Sierra Madre mountain range, and that blocks a lot of the places from, from the uh, typhoons when they come in. But there are places other than Baguio, even though I love Baguio, I wouldn't be surprised to find up living in Baguio. Uh, super great places. If you want to be closer to Manila, Antipolo is just you know an hour and a half, and that's with traffic. It's less than an, it's probably an hour away without traffic. Antipolo, you live up on a hill, you can look down, and it's cool in the mountains. It's beautiful. Uh, you can come into Manila for anything you need to do. You can go a little farther out to Tanai Rizal. It's beautiful. I love it up there. Matter of fact, that's usually where I go when I need to get out of here here and have a break, I go to Tanai Rizal, Baguio, uh, Tagaytay, all in a few. Get down to Lipa City and, and on the uh, east of Lipa City, then there's another uh, mountain there. So there are all kinds of options where you can live at a higher elevation and have cooler weather, things to do, sit out on the porch and relax and chill, not have to run your air conditioning. Just remember when you're at higher elevations, it's like being in, in Colorado Springs or Denver or anywhere else in the, in the Rockies or in the mountains. You know, the UV, the UV light is very strong and you will burn. So make sure that you, again, buy a hat. If you have melatonin and a lot of hair, you're probably all right without a hat, but I, I have neither. So hat was indicated and use an umbrella, use sunscreen, all the normal stuff. All right, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you have any suggestions, as always, throw them down there in the comments section. Uh, reach out and uh, I'll help you any way I can. Please like and subscribe if you want to see some more of this type of stuff. That helps YouTube send these types of videos to your recommended video list. Until next time, put some adventure in your life. Joey out.